September the 2nd, 2021. As you're looking at satellite images that scan the east coast of the U.S. and the remnants of Ida have moved off the Long Island uh, point there and starting to pull offshore now north of there, St. John's, Newfoundland. Pay attention to this storm because I mentioned it in a video yesterday morning. I said the rem remnants of Ida was going to pull off of Long Island and watch because once it hits that water, you're going to have a rain event. And it was much worse than I thought. It, they're saying, and the reports are still coming in, it was a 100-year event. And many places flooded. The images that are on Twitter, and a lot of those are, uh, you can't really show them without copyright permission. But uh, some of the images this morning, let me say this, you can see the flooding, but it's calm. But during the flooding last night, it was raging. The streets looked like a movie. It was like raging uh, mountain rivers after, during a flash flood. That's what it looked like there, and there's a lot of damage. At the last that I saw, it was 17 people had drowned, but it, there was images, again, from a movie. They couldn't have made it better of a subway train running through several feet of water, splashing it on both sides with it pouring in through above them. I guess just, I, I don't even know how these electric trains work in that much water. But it, that and subways flooding, people's basements where they live flooding. Uh, it, it was, there was two or three tornadoes. There's um, bridges and walkways. The guys, in, if you're familiar with Scullykill Riverwalk, I think it's in Pennsylvania, is underwater and it looks like it's heavily damaged. And it's, uh, of course, some people are calling it climate, climate change, and we d must do something immediately. They never address uh, the fact that we're in grand solar minimum. And there's other factors. We, but the main thing is pay attention to it going north because it's very powerful. The scenes are apocalyptic in the New York area and the surrounding area. We'll take a look at one of the articles, but it's pulling offshore now. It has been a path of destruction for several days. Now, this is one of the articles from this morning. It has not been updated. At this time, there were, had been nine confirmed deaths. And then I saw in another location where, again, it was about 17 that they had found that had lost their lives. But they're saying it's, it's the morning after one of the worst floods and possibly a century for parts of the Northeast. This is uh, tweeted images of floodwaters nearly cresting bridges in Philadelphia. Two major hurricanes, uh, excuse me, tornadoes. And guys, a Cat 5 tornado is at 150 miles an hour around the eye wall, but a Cat 3 tornado is 150 miles an hour. And it was ripping up neighborhoods. I saw two different videos. Some were blowing transformers, and uh, it was quite a scene. And then these waters now that are calm were raging. I've never seen anything quite that bad in a city like this. But when you're dealing with a concrete jungle, sometimes there's not a lot of other places for water to drain. But again, the record rainfalls in a short period of time, extremely nasty weather. They really got hit, and it looked like a movie. As you can tell by this, this is uh, where the PA Convention Center is, Independence Hall, Broad Street and Central Philly exits there, 21st Street Bridge. So I, I've never been there, been to D.C., but I've never been to Philly. But uh, the, for you folks there, that's what they were dealing with. But this is definitely the calm after the storm. Even though the water remains like a hurricane, it was like a hurricane. And uh, the, the scenes go and uh, search for the flooding in PA and in, in, uh, in the New York area, and just and look at the uh, actual films. It will wake you up on what these things can do this far inland when they start re-emerging. But even before it re-emerged back into the Atlantic Ocean, people in Tennessee and other folks were getting um, major flooding, major problems. It had a lot of punch to it coming in at the speed it did and at the strength and the size and there's a tropical there's excuse me hurricane larry now that's in the atlantic is expected to become a cat four pretty quick 
but now it, it still looks like it's going to curve into the North Atlantic. But uh, around the 9th of September, there could possibly be another system in the Gulf of Mexico coming into Louisiana. We'll check that. Just a couple of more images here. Now, this is in Yonkers. I guess this is New York, right, on the Hudson River. It's entirely underwater, and there was images. Uh, even one of the guys uh, that works at the Weather Channel, he he had somewhere, wherever it's at in the area, pretty nice place, but it was a um, basement apartment, and, man, it poured in through the windows and doors, and several people were like that, and it was at some places um, the um, – amount of water moving through these open areas would it was like a wave coming through so much of it now some of the updates there and all of them are not here but it says the remnants of hurricane ida triggered flash flood emergencies from for new york city and new jersey late wednesday night as torrential rain winds and tornadoes unleashed chaos across the northeast effectively paralyzing new york where subways were flooded and where mass transit remains largely halted Reuters reports at least nine weather-related deaths from flash flooding in New York City and New Jersey. The deadly water swamped subway stations, airport terminals, highways, tunnels, and baseball stadiums. Again, through the region, there's more people that uh, lost their lives in that. Now, the White House is supposed to deliver remarks uh, today on the federal response to Hurricane Ida, which cut off power from millions and prompted gasoline shortages affecting millions of people across Louisiana. MTA service largely suspended in New York City, 6.56 a.m. New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Service on subway, bus, and commuter rails is largely suspended due to heavy rainfall and flooding across the region. According to the MTA's websites, the C, E, B, Z, and S and number three lines were among those suspended as of 7.30 a.m. Other lines have significant delays. They were underwater, rushing water. It was a nightmare scenes. Around 23400 Eastern Time Wednesday, they posted a weather note detailing the mayhem in New York City as flash floods and subways and multiple tornadoes through New Jersey caused both states and New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio to declare states of emergencies. Now, a quick look at our tropics right now. We still have this system that's a 20% chance of development over the next few days. They're saying that it's going to encounter some upper-level wind shear once it crosses the Yucatan that may prohibit it from um, further development. But now there's a couple of interesting models that we want to look at before this video is over. You've got another system that's 30% chance that's moving off of Africa now. They're uh, saying that at the time, conditions are expected to become less conducive for development. Interest in the Cabo Verde Islands should monitor the progress. Again, 30% chance of development. Now, the Larry is now at 80 miles an hour Cat 1 hurricane. It's expected now to become a Cat 4, but uh, the path looks like it's going to travel uh, north and northeast and curve back into the North Atlantic. Let's hope that's what we're dealing with. It's interesting on how this storm's going to progress and how the one of the models, I think it's the Canadian model, we'll check it, shows it moving north, northeast, and the system in the Caribbean forming and moving into the Louisiana coast. This is the latest advisory on Hurricane Larry itself. Cat 1 now by Friday in the morning. Cat 2 Saturday in the morning. Cat 3 sometimes during the day. Cat a cat 4 and uh, remaining a cat 4 through Monday at 8 a.m. And then slowing to a cat 3 by Tuesday at 8 a.m. That's why I'm saying it's going to be moving into the north uh, east Atlantic and cooler water. And it, it looks like it's going to miss most of the land, guys. I'm not sure after it curves how the storms or the subtropical storms will affect places like the British Isles. Just pay attention to that, you guys. You know how those uh, storms can lash you sometimes. Now, this is a newer update. It's 3 p.m. today, and the models are really getting concise. You had a couple that were tipping down and moving south towards Puerto Rico at at the point where they start to turn north here they're, and it looks like they're going to go to the east of the bahamas that's the small black dot there so more than likely 
this is just going to be a trouble. Uh, it's going to be trouble for mariners, shipping, things like that. Now, let's take a look at the Canadian model, and this is the Y Atlantic model, and it shows here the model goes further than the spaghetti models from the CMC itself. And uh, Saint Newfoundland, uh, people there in the Labrador Sea, what is that, St. John's, you could have a Cat 2 or something by the time it cool, gets into that cooler water, which could be trouble. So you need to very closely pay attention to this. Now notice in the orange, guys, as we let it play through again, a couple of things. You've got the system in the Caribbean coming in as a weak storm somewhere around Mississippi or Alabama in this model. But here, the orange section is the high pressure. That's the controlling um, mechanism as far as steering for these storms. If it gives way, the way it's showing there, it's going to miss most of the U.S. But again, our friends north of there, you may get a lashing from this thing check this out if that orange area does not give way like that you guys in the east coast here in the u.s just pay attention to it we're going to cover it in small it's showing a small storm forming in the gulf of mexico right there skimming mouth of the mississippi river moving northeast now these models are changing now at about two or three times a day this one is showing again larry strengthening to a cat four look at the coloration and the size of that storm and notice this is as far as it goes out on their model. But that orange area of high pressure is going to be key to the impact point of the storm. It, it is it do, it is going to do a very hard curve north, northeast. It's just going to depend on what happens at this point. You're looking at going into around September. There's 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th to the 10th right there. Powerful hurricane setting off the east coast. Check that out. Notice this one, again, skates just to the east of Bermuda. Bermuda will get, definitely get a taste of that storm. And again, it shows slight development in the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, we're gonna, we've got a few days out from that. I think it was September the 9th on some of the problems that could form from the uh, system in the, that's going to move into the Gulf itself. And very strong storm forming with Larry. We'll keep an eye on it, guys. We're watching it. It's a heads up. Be safe.